Hello all, welcome to Learn Payments channel. In this video, we will look at what is stand-in and how does it work in traditional authorizations processing. This video is split into two sections. In the first section, I talk about what is standing processing and in the second section, we will look at how does it work. We all know that an authorization flows from an acquirer, then to scheme and then to issuer. What if for some reason, if the issuer is down or not reachable. So in this case, the scheme stands on behalf of the issuer to process the authorization. So this functionality is called as stand-in processing. It is also called as STIP. So the functionality where the schemes stand in on behalf of the issuing or acquiring members is called as standing processing. Let's look at an example. Say an acquirer initiates an authorization request and forwards it to Scheme and Scheme for some reason is not able to reach out to the issuer. Then Scheme sends a response on behalf of the issuer, a one message. And then once the issuer is up and running, then the Scheme issues a 120 authorization advice and receives a 130 an authorization advice response. So what are the scenarios that enforce the STIP processing to be invoked? Say, if for some reason the connectivity to an issuer is down, how do we know if the connectivity is lost? It could be because the issuer did not respond in a given time frame, or if the schemes continuously receive timeouts from the issuer, then schemes will decide that the connectivity is down and will invoke the stand-in processing. Or otherwise, the issuers might be doing some maintenance activity. It could be a product upgrade or some implementation scenarios, in which case the issuer would sign off from the network with the schemes using an administrative message, informing the schemes to stand on their behalf and then the stand-in processing will kick in. Let's see how does it work. For stand-in to work, the issuers can set some parameters with the schemes. So what are the parameters that the issuer can decide with the schemes to process the authorizations? They can set up certain transaction parameters. We will look at what are the transaction parameters in the next slide. Or they can whitelist or blacklist certain accounts in the form of an exception files. And they can also request the scheme to perform PIN or EMV related validations. So these are the parameters the issuers agree with schemes and the schemes would use these parameters to decide on the authorizations. So what are the transaction parameters that the issuers can set? So issuers can say that the number of approved transactions for a given account on a given day. Say I don't want to approve more than 10 transactions for a given account on a given day. So this is like a velocity parameter that the issuer defines with the scheme. Apart from the count, issuers can also define the amount of approved transactions for a given account per day. This is an aggregated amount for a given day. The issuers can also say the maximum single transaction amount that could be approved for a single transaction. So schemes look at all these parameters before approving a transaction the next important thing is the exception files or positive or negative files. So schemes maintain certain files called as positive and negative files. It is updated by the issuers to indicate the good or bad accounts. So in case of a negative file, the issuers would pass on this data to schemes to say that, hey, these cards are blocked for some reason. It could be because the account is closed or the account is delinquent or there could be a positive file which states that certain cards are VIP customers, so they might require higher transaction limits. So in case of a negative file, when a transaction is received, the schemes would look into negative and positive files. In case if the card is in the negative file, the schemes would decline or otherwise schemes would look into the positive file to get up limits for approval of transaction for VIP accounts. Now let's look in detail, how does it work? First, the acquirer sends an authorization message to scheme. Then the issuer is not reachable 
and scheme stands on behalf of the issuer and decides the authorization. So how is it done? So scheme looks at the parameters that we spoke of and then maintains something called as a SAF queue. It is called store and forward queue. It stores all the authorization details, whatever it received from the acquirer and also the decision made in the SAF queue and it responds to the acquirer. This is an important step. Once the issuer is up and running, then the issuer would request an advice retrieval message, which is an administrative message, an 800 message to, this, to the schemes. Schemes would provide the details of all the authorization advices to the issuer after that. So once it receives the SAF advice retrieval, the schemes would forward all the authorizations it decided on their behalf to the issuer. So the key thing here is an advice is a message that the schemes have taken a decision on on behalf of the issuer. So this ad advice message's response cannot be modified by the issuer. So once it stands as an approval or a decline, the issuer has to accept as is. When the issuer receives a 120 message, the D39, the response code cannot be edited and then sent to schemes. So what are the MTIs for advices? It is 120 or 220 or 420, where the third bit is actually two. So when the scheme receives a 100 message, it forwards the issuer as a 120 message. So if the scheme receives a financial transaction request of 200, it would forward a 220 message to the issuer. So the decision taken by the schemes is passed in the standard D39 response code field. The reason for which the schemes had to stand in is also passed in a field called advice reason code. In MasterCard, it is data element 60 and sub element 1, whereas in Visa, it is 63.4. So there are certain set of reason codes that schemes pass to tell the issuer why it stood on their behalf. So issuers trigger this advice retrieval mode, an administrative message, an 800 message to schemes to retrieve all the advices. Sometimes by default, this particular uh, advice retrieval mode is always on for a given issuer. So far, we looked at all stand-ins on behalf of issuer. Similarly, the schemes also stand in on behalf of the acquirers. Say, an issuer initiates a chargeback, a 422 message, then if the acquirer is unavailable, the scheme receives the chargebacks and forwards to acquirer when they are up and running. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you learned something new from it. Do like and subscribe. Thank you.